Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of RFD Television, I give you Trish Lynn and the All-American Cowgirl Tick. I could stand here and do it all day. It's scary. It's stuff that's tabooed, you know, to most people that come to rodeos. And Rodeo's a sport. We know that. But you have to have a show, and voila, All-American Cowgirl Chicks put on the show. Come on, girls, let's ride. Usually our horses run about 35 to 40 miles an hour. It's dangerous, and these ladies will take some chances tonight. This is reality television here. It'll be interesting. We'll get up close and personal. Don't look at my feet. <laughs> and that's one thing that I'm really proud of RFD TV is they stand behind the youth and they want them to be strong Americans and it starts with rodeo. God bless America and our heroes tonight. There's so many people who have worked so hard for their land and their animals and then you come out now and you go and look at it and you see what we see now, it's just depressing. You don't even want to get up and go to work anymore. It'll take you a long time to recover for sure. Hi, I'm Trish Lim with the All-American Cowgirl Chicks. Thanks so much for watching our show. Today, I've got two good cowboys that I'm really proud to introduce you to from our hometown of Weatherford, Texas. Every time we hit that interstate, there's one thing, it's just like getting fuel for your truck. You have to make for sure that those horses have everything that they need. So, Kim Rhodes Place is somewhere, the Cowgirl Chicks, we visit about twice a week. Uh, we load in, we get our hay, we get our shavings, whatever the horses need, um, and whatever we forgot, if we need air in our tires, they're always looking out for our best interest before we hit uh, the highway. Kim himself, Dion, his wife, and uh, his ranch helper, Juan, are the only ones that work at Rhodes and Son Feed Store. And they wouldn't be able to do that without the equipment that Kim has upgraded to. And it's uh, really neat to see and learn. We got into this three-string deal by accident. We started handling some three-string hay out of Arizona. And uh, I would get a truckload almost every week. And after church, the boys would meet back here. And I would hold a pallet up there just a pallet on the end of that little John Deere tractor and they put nine bales on that pallet and I'd go set it down. We'd stack them just like that, semi-load every Sunday. That got pretty old and eventually I just gave up that I couldn't do it anymore by hand and we borrowed a bunch of money and bought that equipment. Mm -hmm. Been the best thing to ever happen. With minimal help and I've got enough cutters and tractors and stuff that we can go lay down a hundred acres we can come back the next day and, and put a couple of wind rows together. And now we have the ability to bale and stack 2,000 or more bales a day for those three strangers. And that's equivalent to 4,000 little bales. Mm -hmm. And we're the only people that I know of in this part of the country that has that three string baling system. And uh, it's put us ahead of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. we're, we're proud to have it. You know, every business operator it totally looks for that one dependable person, um, if not, you know, 10 dependable people to run and, and help you operate your business. It's like a needle in a haystack. Kim has found uh, someone, his name is Juan. Juan is probably one of the hardest workers that I've ever seen. What Kim needs him to do, he does it. Uh, he does it very well and he helps the cowgirl chicks. When we're on the road uh, performing, Juan comes and helps tend to our horses at home. Behind the scenes when we're gone, this yes. does our grunt work for us. Yes. <laughs> we want to say thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Kim. Cowgirl chicks rock. Check out the Cowgirl Chicks store at www.cowgirlchicks.com. The Cowgirl Chicks have their very own country music, cool posters, Cowgirl Chick t-shirts, and bling bling jewelry. 
tack and rodeo equipment for every cowgirl and equestrian business. Our very own horse hair extensions, made by Gypsy Tails. Patty, almost anywhere you go get it is as high as a woodpecker's nest. Yeah. I mean, there is no cheap hay left. The hay that is normally raised in this county is just not here anymore. Right. It has been so dry that it just, nobody raised any hay, period. We had to graze the coastal because the pasture grass couldn't hold the cattle. Right. And in the meanwhile of all that, we've shipped out more than half the cattle off of both places. No one's driving the truck. <laughs> Something happened to the driver. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you, one of the things that really hurt us this year was as soon as uh, we got done with our first cutting, I told Dion, I said, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that fertilizer back out there just like we always do. We had that rain they said was coming. Yeah, they yeah. they teased us with that rain and we've got over $8,000 worth of fertilizer laying on those fields over there that'll never fire a shot this year. And they'll have enough moisture to dissolve it and then it'll just, just gone in the wind, you know. The drought got up into Oklahoma and the lower parts of Kansas, and it uh, just sort of siphoned all the hay out of the bottom of Nebraska, and it's just sort of arcing back and forth. They're expecting alfalfa in California and Arizona to be 300 a ton there soon, and it's not far from it now. And uh, that's a tremendous price to add another 100 and something to get it here, wow. and then a markup on top of that to handle it. It just, there's just no cheap way to get it here and yeah. get it to the end user. Can you talk about what's gonna happen next year? Ooh, that's a big question. Right. To be honest with you, I'm gonna go ahead and sell off the roping cattle probably. Uh, I don't need those horn cattle. Uh, I'd rather, if I'm gonna feed something, I wanna feed something that's gonna be worth something next spring. And, and you just watch. When we all in Texas decide that it's time to buy back, the people who come down here and bought our cows from us, they're gonna get well off of it whenever they, whenever it turns around, yeah, the cows are gonna be high. They can't help but be high, there's none down here. We're all in a situation where we're gonna have to diversify a little bit. You know, fortunately for us, when we can't make hay, we buy more hay. Uh, the people that are just the end users are the, are the in the tough situation right. because they, they still have to buy it. They have to buy it when it's good and they have to buy it when it's bad. You know, it costs a lot to lease it. It costs a lot to fertilize it. You know, over here, before we ever cut a blade of grass down or graze a bite off, it's going to cost me almost 30 some odd thousand to fire the first shot. How long will it take? How many years will it set us back? to recover and get back to where it's affordable for us to try to maintain our, our herds. Is it gonna rain next spring? Coastal is a resilient crop, you know. Every time it tries to come a little shower around here, it comes back green. Now, it may be thinner, but at least it comes back green and, and it's kinda like, well, uh, I'm confident that the stands will be there. They'll be thinner mm -hmm. and weaker, but they will come back. Go well, work it'll anymore. take you a long time to recover. And it's taken them how long to finally get it up to par and now you're having to start from scratch again. It's just, people don't realize in the city or anywhere, even in the country, people don't realize all the work and effort that goes behind the scenes to making, you know, a couple acres of grass for your cows, much less hay. And, and remember, we produce lots of hay here too. Uh, it's not always going to be this dry. Uh, God hadn't give up on us. It'll, it'll be green again one of these days. I just don't know when. Dion is the most outstanding example that I could give anyone of a rancher's wife. To, first of all, to be blessed to be able to work beside Kim and to really know him on a professional level, not just a personal level, but the professional side of him and his honesty, his knowledge, his appreciation he does business. Right. Um, it's been an eye-opening for me. Personally, I never thought I'd grow up in the country and run 
my feed store because I was raised in the city, but to really appreciate the blessings that God has given us in our customers. Our customers are not just customers. Right. They're friends. We know them pretty well. We know their families. And just like y'all, you know, we treat people like we want to be treated and we care about our customers and we care about what's going on in their lives. So we're not just here to sell something that um, we're hopefully here to to be friends and take care of them in that respect as well, not just a business, you know, relationship, but a personal relationship as well. And that means a lot to us too. I love RFD TV. Bruce Tompkins' brother came to Kim Rhodes' place. He knew that we were going to bring the two black and white paints that Bruce gave and donated to the cowgirl chicks. This is Oki on the on my left. He likes to buck, and Doki on my right. He likes to rear up. We'll tie this one to that one, <laughs> and uh, when they take off and he breaks in two, he'll jerk that one's head down. <laughs> this one will hold him in the ground. Usually I have my Rhodes and Sons hat on when I do this. Yeah, I bet you do. Eddie, you don't need stirrups. Come on. One only adjusts one stirrup. It was exciting for us to bring these uh, paints along and to show the progress that we've made. You know, it's taken a little bit longer time than what we thought. With a lot of hours in the, the saddle, you know, we've been able to season them a little bit, but I still have a long way to go, but they're big, they're beautiful, and hopefully one day we can make them into a Roman riding team. One thing about a cowboy is they eat three meals a day. After our visit with Kim Rhodes at his feed store, uh, they were getting hungry before we went to the field. So we stopped by our one and only Mary's Cafe to get a great bite of chicken fried steak. It's been a, a, a pretty neat deal for me knowing Donnie and them. Donnie being a rodeo bull fighter, he gets to see things that I don't ever see anymore. I went to some rodeos early on in my life, but my life is consumed now with staying there at that store or uh, cutting and bailing hay during the season. I get to go to a few team ropings along, but to be honest with you, that's pretty few, really. I'm trying to live vicariously through Donnie. And I get to hear all these stories that he tells, and um, you'll hear a lot of pretty funny stuff from a, a bullfighter, and I've enjoyed it. <laughs> We've spent the day with Kim Rhodes of Rhodes and Sons Feed. He's uh, taught us and showed us things that we knew, but we want everybody to know the, the woes and the stress that's going on down here in, in Texas and just in the south altogether, I guess, from the drought. Um, he's making it work. He's, uh, like I said, he just keeps hope. And that's what we all got to do. And we appreciate him taking his time out to be with us and Cowgirl Chicks on RFD TV. And we're ready to go. And, we're gonna catch some of them fish and, and pray for rain. That's a good idea. Come and you're in Weatherford, come to Roads and Sons. On this team, we're all united in a common goal, to give our best and to keep our job. Are you ready to be an all-American cowgirl chick? You and your horse will experience performing at rodeos, theme parks, fairs across the country. Appear on national television. Share your experience and knowledge mentoring the youth on rodeo. Receive extensive training in horsemanship, showmanship in the rodeo arena today. Come on! Auditions coming in 2012. For more information for requirements, contact Trish Lynn at cowgirlchicks.com. Hold on, you're in for a great ride. I fell in love with Paul Cameron Smith's work uh, when I went to the Fort Worth Stock Show and I saw some of his pencil drawings there. Most of all, meeting him and knowing I had no idea he lived in Weatherford. Um, and he asked me to be on one of his uh, drawings, which was a total honor for me. I was 15 years old in high school. Wow. And I did a portrait of a classmate 
and uh, in pencil. Mm -hmm. the, the art teacher saw that and really liked it. She put it up in the library to display and uh, several teachers asked if I would do a portrait of their parents. So that's what started my pencil drawing career because I, I, my first paid pencil drawing portrait was $35. <laughs> wow. it, took me, it took me 18 hours to do it. So that, you know, that was, that was my first sell. But uh, from there I did portraits all through high school. Um, and then even in college I, I drew quite a few portraits in the Abilene, Texas area. Kind of got known for my portrait work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did several book illustrations for the university at Hardin Simmons University. So all these things were coming together and it was looking good as far as trying to make a living. But I was drawing all the time. And it was pretty tedious what I do, very detailed work. And so I, I was trying to think how can I, how can I draw less and still make a living at art? Right. And my brother said, well just do a drawing and print it and see what happens, you know. So I went out, this was January, mm -hmm. to Abilene to uh, post some college friends of mine. But we took this really good romantic pose of a cowgirl kissing his cowboy goodbye. And I call it One for the Road. And that, I remember that. that print, uh, I printed it, took it to the Forward Stock Show, and a gentleman, Gary Habard, agreed to try to sell them. I left him uh, 10 prints on a Friday night. And I said, if you need any more before the show's over, call me. We called me the very next morning and said, hey, I sold them all, bring me some more. And that, that's what really started my career. Paul was actually doing a print of Jim with the American flag. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I got the idea of doing a patriotic print after 9-11. Uh, I wanted to get on board with the enthusiasm for America and the American flag. And, uh, you know, I've been doing the Western pencil drawings for years and that just uh, worked out great. I knew Jim Bradford from church and he uh, agreed to post for me. So he rode in circles about 50, 60 times just as you did for the next print. But uh, it turned out wonderful. It, was, it had a really good response at the Forest Stock Show and Rodeo. We sold a lot of prints that year featuring that print. You know, I have to ask you this because you are dead on set on what you want to do today. You're going to mm -hmm. try to create another print today. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're excited to be a part of that and we want to capture the vision and h how do you come up with the idea? It, number one, you don't use an average girl, you use the cowgirl. Mm -hmm. So why is that? The ideas come to me usually when I'm driving down the road, maybe you know, going to Abilene or something, listening to country music. I'll, I'll listen to the lyrics and I'm picturing in my mind what, what image fits those lyrics. Right. You know, um, so a lot of it has, has come to me in, in that way. Country music has a big part of uh, my inspiration. Okay, let me have one of your legs, bring your one of your legs out a little bit like that, okay? This print is the last print that you did? This only was last year, yeah. And uh, it's a beautiful print of a cowboy and cowgirl holding hands. Got two horses side by side. Um, and it's called Only You. Tell me how you thought of this. This is a, a real cool print. Uh, just another romantic theme. Uh, you know, coming up with a good title that tugs at your heartstrings. That's, the, yeah. that's always a goal of mine to, to uh, make the viewer when they see it. They think, you know, I can relate to that. Every cowboy has his one and only cowgirl. So that that title just fit this image. You know, they're. They're walking to put the horses up after a good day's ride, and uh, they basically he's looking at her and he's thinking, "You're you're my one, you're the one and only, only you." So. Right, and that's the main ingredient to me mm -hmm. is bringing out that print to its trueness. Right. You know, the thing that appeals to me about the Cowgirl Chicks riding team is they're authentic, and they they work hard, and they love what they do and it's the Western heritage shows through in everything that they do and you, you're a big part of that. When I found out what you were doing and the causes that you're trying to help out, I mean, I just, I want to help you, you've helped me. It's a good relationship. I mean, it's an incredible team that you put together and uh, so. Thank you very much. Well, you've seen those little girls. They they were little girls when we started right. and now they're women. Right. So it makes me feel all but. Uh, I'm very proud of what, you know, they didn't, uh, Get anything handed to them. They've earned it. Mm -hmm. uh, they worked really hard with horses they that you know kind of had some struggles. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you what: in this world, we look up to hardworking people, whether they're 
artists like yourself. We appreciate the work that you put out. Uh, we love this lifestyle because it is what it is. It's a lifestyle that we chose to live and we don't mind the work. But through these prints, you'll see the hard work uh, through the vision of a cowboy or, or cowgirl through Paul Cameron Smith's eyes. I promise you, if you have someone that loves the Western lifestyle and you need a holiday gift for them for Christmas, please don't miss out. Check out his website at paulcameronsmith.com or go to www.cowgirlchicks.com and buy one of these prints. They're great for all ages. There's a lot of romantic couples out there, but they also have family portraits and also some rough, lighter, uh, rough stock pictures that are great as well. So thank you for joining us with Paul Cameron Smith and the Cowgirl Chicks, and we will see you on down the road. You know, folks have always been amazed about what I can put in a bottle, like this and this. My Cowboys Cowboy barbecue sauce, salsa, and rub. Bottled up inside is the bold taste of Texas, rich and full of flavor. So pick up a bottle and just put a piece between your cheek and gum. Or even better, fill up your whole mouth. We'd like to introduce you to the newest addition of the Cowgirl Chick family. Um, he's a little mini bull with a big attitude called Hot Sauce. Get him, Virgil! <laughs> 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 much for watching our show guys we had a blast and we're so proud to be from weatherford texas and the people that come out of it so uh, stay tuned next week you don't want to miss it saddle up and follow your dreams with the cowgirl chicks like give me a beat oh it's kind of slow there we go <laughs> we like to worm the cows we made it through Ooh, i'm gonna do some madonna song <laughs> Right. We like it, so don't go to school. No, they gotta go to school. We'll go to school. No, don't go to school. Go to college, go to school. But you need to learn how to do this. Not sitting on the fence. You need to learn to get down and get dirty with the bulls. Get down and on the farm. Yeah, he was on it. I about fell off. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. I better. Ah! Ah! I just respect. Respect them. Where's your hat up? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, Virgil, do you respect hot sauce? <laughs> Welcome to the real world. Ow. <laughs> yes. Any last words for the day? Thank you for spending time with us today. And we finally found Eric's car in 300 acres. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't know if he's going to make it back or not. So we're going to follow him. Did you but bring a gas can? 